Hello and welcome to this video from the DCGist. In this video we're going to be looking at output 3 which is the SOLIDWORKS parts and assembly. There aren't any pages in the portfolio dedicated to this output uh, but instead it's the actual SOLIDWORKS itself so the parts and the assembly that you've made. In this video then we're going to have a look at the marking scheme and the requirements that are within those. Uh, we are going to look at what you need to do in output 3, what the required file structure needs to be. Um, and then how you prepare before you start actually doing your SOLIDWORKS model, which is one of the most important things. Steps to effectively create your features and then the steps to effectively create your assemblies. So looking at the marking scheme then, what you'll see is that output 3 is worth 35 marks this year, whereas it used to be worth 20, 28 in the past, okay, which means that they're now um, adding on an extra 7 marks. And if we look a little bit more closely comparing uh, the two marks with the breakdown, you'll see that the main changes is that in the PARP model is now worth 15 compared to the 10 that it used to be, okay, so it's now worth, it's now worth more marks. And then the assembly is also worth... Um, a couple of extra marks. Okay, the rest of them are the are the same. Now, what that means is that the part models part, so the actual making of your parts, is what's really getting that heavy that heavy weighting. So, this year we have to be even more careful than normal with our with our part models. Okay, and making sure that we fulfil all of the requirements that they're asking us to do in here. And um, then with the assembly, the extra two marks for that. Um, normally, when it comes to the assembly, the assembly almost takes care of itself. There'll be some uh, dimensions that change but generally you should be okay with your assembly as long as your part models have been done well so this is really all about those part models and the marking scheme uh, reflects that then if we dive a bit deeper into these uh, the requirements that you're going to have for output three what you'll see is that there's two kind of sections in it there's a SOLIDWORKS parts which now uh, is worth 15 marks okay and then there's a SOLIDWORKS assembly which is worth seven and in order to get the full marks for these, we'll need to make sure that we fulfill these requirements. So the adherence to the file structure, I'll talk about later in the video. Creation of at least five parts, but no more than 10 is something that's very easy to follow. Okay, so just don't have more than 10 parts and don't have less than five. Then with your part models, what we have is proficiency of parametric CAD, economy of design and design intent, selection of the most appropriate profiles, sketches are fully defined, features are renamed, and appropriate type of extrusions and end conditions used. Within that, really what you're, what you're looking at is the proficiency of your um, parametric modeling and your CAD and your economy of design and design intent. And really those two um, encapsulate the rest okay um, apart from the features rename that's kind of on its own that's just something that we that we do at the end okay but having your um, most appropriate profiles and sketches fully defined and your appropriate types of extrusions and end conditions come within that okay and I'll discuss that a little bit later in the video um, then the factor of difficulty and the design intent again you'll see that that's mentioned twice um, in the in the marking scheme um, on the on the page before so that design intent is is really important and again i'll talk about that later the creation of the assembly then for your seven marks so that you've created assembly at all the accuracy of the parts to facilitate the correct assembly so what you'll see there is that that's in the requirements for the assembly but really that's still coming from the parts okay um, correct mating of those parts, the application of appropriate appearances, and the e-drawing of the of the CAD model. So you'll see there's a lot less involved in the assembly in comparison to the to the SOLIDWORKS parts, and that's reflected in the in the marks. Okay, and it's also reflected in the practicalities of of making a SOLIDWORKS model. Most of the work is in the parts. So breaking these requirements down then a bit further, making them a little bit easier to understand what we're doing, uh, what we're going to look at is what do I need to do in output three, so practically. So the design intent really, what you want to make sure you do is that you add in as many relations and equations as possible and that you use adaptable feature end conditions, so avoid using blind if possible, okay? So you want to do it up to surface um, or offset from surface or things like that so that they can change if things change later, okay? And that's really what design intent is about and you'll see it down here so design intent is using the fewest most adaptable features possible to create a part and um, if you change one dimension the rest of your model should change with it and that's really what you want to think about is this one down here is that if you follow this idea and you model and if you make it that that is possible and that is the case then you've done really well with your SOLIDWORKS and you're well on your way to to getting full marks that's not to say that every single 
uh, dimension has to be dependent on that but just if you can get it that most of them are that's what you're what you're trying to do okay um you've got to remember that you're you're not that experienced with solidworks at this at this point in time so to make it absolutely perfectly um set up that changing one dimension would do it would be unrealistic but we're trying to achieve it as close as we can to that then with your SOLIDWORKS sketches, uh, select the most appropriate sketches for your features and ensure all sketches are fully defined. That fully defined thing is just unforgivable if you have any sketches that aren't fully defined, okay? You have to make sure that you that you do that. Um, there, that would be a real waste of marks if you didn't fully define all your sketches. To do that, you'll have be giving it dimensions, but then you'll also be giving it relations and equations. Your SOLIDWORKS features then, so use the most appropriate features and rename all the features. Again, renaming all the features is another one of those unforgivable things that you can't leave out because it's really easy to do and you can leave it till the end if you want, um, but all it is is just taking the time to do it, okay? If you haven't done that, it's just that you didn't put the time into it. Um, and then I would recommend putting in three surface features, okay? So thinking about what you could put in the surfaces or even asking your teacher, um, could any of these be surfaces is a good idea just to show your um, parametric modeling ability, okay? That's a, it's a good thing to put in. Um, with the assembly then, so the parts should fit together properly with no big gaps, particularly no overlapping parts. Really, when it comes to putting it together, overlapping parts just can't happen because in the real world, nothing is going to be able to overlap. You're looking at solid pieces of plastic or metal or wood or whatever it is that you're modeling. So that just couldn't happen. Whereas with the big gaps, big gaps are a little bit more forgivable because... Uh, physically that is possible okay so you could have that in your in your design but you'll never have two overlapping parts because physically it's just not possible so don't don't let that happen uh, mate your parts correctly so every part should have three mates to fully define them so basically what you're looking at there is that you want to make sure that if you were to um, hold on to a part with your mouse and try to move it you wanted that it doesn't move and generally three mates are going to do that occasionally two will be enough but most of the time it's going to be three. Um, you want to apply materials and textures, color to your parts. Now, you're not going to actually really do that in your assembly, okay? It's going to happen in your parts that you that you give uh, materials and textures and color, okay? So um, it'll be all ready when it goes into the, into the assembly, it won't be done in the assembly. And then save your assembly as an e-drawing is, again, one of those things that's so simple. You do it at the end. It takes about 30 seconds at the very end to do that. But we just need to make sure not to forget it okay it'd be a real shame to forget it and lose those marks because it's probably the easiest thing to do in the whole project so then what is the required file structure there's marks going for this so we need to make sure that we get it right and um, it's a very simple thing to do but it's just making sure that you're that you're aware of what it should look like so what we have is that we have a main folder that's going to be just labeled with dcg a uh, student assignment and then with your exam number and then within that folder you're going to have three more folders so one of them is going to be your portfolio in electronic format one is going to be your part a and the other one is going to be part b okay so there's one main folder and then three small folders inside that Within the portfolio in electronic format, then you're going to have all of your portfolio pages saved as individual PDF files. And that's including scanned versions of output two and output six, even though they are, you'll be handing up the, the original versions of those, so the original sketches, but you want to have a scanned version in your electronic format. Um, and then you want to have PDF versions of output four and output seven, which are the SOLIDWORKS drawing files. So you'll have the actual drawing files themselves um, in the part A and part B, but you also want to have a PDF version in here so that the portfolio is complete in the PDF version. Then in part A, you're going to have all of your SOLIDWORKS part files. So that'll be five to 10 of those. You'll have your SOLIDWORKS assembly file. So there'll only be one of them. You'll have your output for SOLIDWORKS drawing file. Okay, so, so far that's five to 10 uh, parts. That's one assembly and one drawing file. And then you'll have your assembly saved as an e-drawing file. Okay, and that's done at the end. Okay, so um, don't forget that. It's very easy to forget that. And it's marks that there's no need to lose them. So just don't forget those ones. Then in your part B, you're gonna have one SOLIDWORKS part file. Okay, so it's, it's um, uh, you uh, you don't have an, uh, an assembly in this one, it's just all in one part. Then uh, you're going to have your output 7 um, SOLIDWORKS drawing file, so that's going to be in there as well in that folder, um, as well as the PDF version in the portfolio um, in electronic far format part. And then your SOLIDWORKS part file saved as an e-drawing file. So once again, 
that e drawing file is so easy to get the marks for it but so easy to forget so just don't forget that and one of the main pieces of advice I would give when it comes to your files is to keep two backups of your work, okay? I can't stress this enough. What you want to have is that you're going to have your solo work saved on your computer in school probably. And then what you should really do is keep a USB version of it that you that you can have. And even to be extra safe, if you have a second USB version that maybe you back up every, maybe once a week, so that just in case the, anything happens, that you, you'll have your, your backups. There is nothing worse than getting to November, even into December, and then something happening with your files um, and you lose everything. It has happened to me in the past, to students that I've had, um, and it's just not a nice place to be in. So um, it might seem a little bit over the top to have two backups, but you won't regret it when you get to the end. And especially if anything happens, you'll be so happy that you have those backups. So don't, don't skimp on those. So here I'm going to talk about something that's not spoken about very often, but something that's really important to do, and that is to prepare your um, strategy before you actually start your SOLIDWORKS model. Um, all too often people start their SOLIDWORKS model and try to kind of make it up as they go along, and that costs time, but also makes it more difficult to have that design intent that I was talking about earlier. So at this point, you'll have chosen your artifact uh, when comparing it in output one, page two. Um, and then sketch it in output two. So you should be very familiar with it at this point and the different parts of it um, and how it goes together. So what you'll be doing is breaking your artifact down into your five to 10 parts. And what this might mean is grouping some small parts together if you have more than 10. So most um, artifacts, when we're looking at them, probably have more than 10 parts. But when you're doing your modeling, what you want to do is you can only have your 10. So maybe grouping some of them together is a good idea. Uh, use an A4 page per part then. So pick out one A4 page per part and this step is absolutely vital. I can't stress this enough. If you do this, then it will make your life so much easier as you work through your, your project. And what you're going to do is you're going to sketch your SOLIDWORKS sketches and features that you're going to need to use to create your, your part. And then you're going to devise the order that you complete these in. Okay, so at this point, once you've completed this step, you'll know the order you're going to do your features in, and with that, the sketches, um, and you'll also obviously know which ones you're which ones you're going to do. Now, this could change as you go through it, but if you have your your plan to start with, it's much easier then to make small changes later rather than um, kind of as I say, making it up as you go along. Once you've completed each A4 page, then you should discuss your plan with your teacher to check if it's realistic um, or if he or she would recommend something different. So um, you have a certain amount of experience, but then your teacher has more experience again. So they might say or might um, recommend that possibly you change some of your, your features um, to help with your design intent or just because maybe it just won't work um, because the order might be incorrect or maybe the sketches might be from the wrong angle or something like that. And that's what your teacher is there for. They're there to give you that advice. Um, but if you go to your teacher with your plan then um, it's much easier for them to help you than if you were to just go to them with no plan at all and ask for ask for advice then once you've had that discussion with your teacher then go and start measuring your your artifact and get modeling in SOLIDWORKS then okay as I say these are likely to change as you go through but if you have your plan at the start it'll be much easier to make those changes and it'll be much more adaptable um, later on in the in the project and um, then our steps to effectively create your model features. Um, what you're going to do is that you're going to choose your best sketch um, to create your feature and then decide on a plane that, this, that you're going to sketch that on. That might mean creating a new plane. So if it was on one of your principal planes, so your top plane, your right plane or your front plane, then that's fine. But you may have to create a new plane if those ones don't suit. Then you're going to look for as much symmetry and relationships in the sketch as possible. So again, coming to that design intent. So we want to have as many relations as we as we can. So before we start, we want to be able to recognize those. So any symmetry, so you can use mirror or any relationships so you can re use relations will help with that. Then you're going to make sure to add in as many relations and equations as you can. Okay, so equations are really if something is maybe half the size of something else, then instead of putting in those two dimensions, then you can use an equation to do that. Um, and really what that's just there to do is that if you change dimensions, that the proportions will stay the same uh, with your equations. So equations are something that aren't used um, that often by people really, but they're really, really powerful and can make a huge difference to your project. Okay, and then as I said before, you absolutely have to fully define your sketches. Okay, um, if you don't, you're just throwing away marks. 
um, you need to make sure that you fully define them. Then once you've uh, made your or done your sketch, then you create your feature. And as I said earlier, you want to make sure that your end conditions are adaptable end conditions. Um, if you can avoid using blind, that's for the best. And then at the end, then you're going to rename your feature. Again, something so simple that you can do. It's really easy to do. Um, don't forget to leave it or don't forget to do it. Okay, it's, it's, it's really important and so easy. And then you're just repeating over and over again for your various different... Um, um, features in your in your first part model and then your second one and your third one your fourth one and fifth one all the way up to 10 if you happen to have 10 okay so it's just that same step sequence just over and over again until you're finished uh, making your your parts and then finally for this video then the steps to effectively create your assemblies and um, what you'll do for that is that you'll insert your first part and the important thing with that first uh, part is that it sets the planes of reference okay so that's going to affect your isometric view so make sure that you think about that one and, and choose it wisely and um, then insert your second part if they don't fit decide which part is easier to change and make changes in the part file try not to change both parts so really what you want to do is that if you if something doesn't fit look for the simplest possible solution to make it fit and just change one of the parts then you're going to mate your amended parts with your three mates uh, per pair and then finally drag your parts to check that they don't move so that to make sure that you've fully kind of defined your your um, assembly okay with those with those three mates if they do move then you just need to add in another mate um, or two possibly if, if you've only added in the one and then again it's a repeat 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 for your various parts to put it into your assembly and for them all to for them all to go together okay but the really big thing i take from that is try not to change both parts okay just change the simpler one okay um, and then everything should work out so thanks for watching uh, this video on Output 3. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you did, please give it a like and subscribe so that you'll be the first to know of any new videos I put in. Um, and then share it with, uh, with your friends so that they can get the use from the from the information in there as well. I want to try to help as many people as possible so the more people that, that uh, see it, um, the better. Um, and with that, I will see you next time.